Hi everyone, welcome to a Sip and Spin Spindle Spotlight. Today's spindle is the one piece carved spindle. Betty Hotsberg does a beautiful job of talking about this spindle. She's one of the only authors who has provided the extent of information we have about this particular style of spindle. Interestingly enough, this spindle is also referred to as a Victorian silk spindle, which is a little bit of a misnomer. This spindle was probably used in the late 18th century, putting that in the 1700s, following ladies' fashion from Italy to France and then down to Spain. As silk production or the need for silk production waned, this particular style of spindle became more of a novelty, as Betty says, a novelty for the aristocracy. Now I'm going to make a little bit of an inference. Because this was a novelty and not a tool necessary for fiber production, I feel like that could be one of the reasons why we have so few extant pieces as well as so few visual representations of that. Looking at medieval art and a lot of the other art that has been produced over the centuries, of women using spindles, they are spindles that are, or they're in images depicting a tool being used to create fiber necessary for existence. And this was, as Betty has said, more of a novelty that followed fashion of the aristocracy. So I feel like this tool would have been something that would have been used in the sitting room alongside women who were working on needlepoint or sewing or some other pastime. And because of how it's described in Bet's book, that's why I wanted to showcase these two spindles. These are both made by the Spanish peacock. One is made of spectroply, which is a little bit more figured wood, and I really like this one because it reminds me of the Ravenclaw colors, which is why I have this one. And then this is probably a little bit more traditional in a solid wood. They both weigh about the same. And the interesting thing with this type of spindle, you can see the curved S hook. The other reason why I have two is because this one does, it blends in with my apron perfectly, whereas this one stands out just a little bit more. The S hook, which I have seen, and I'll show this on a couple other spindles that I have, helps to balance the spin, and I've found it also helps hold the fiber a little bit more secure as it's spinning. Again, a suspended spindle is a little bit more difficult to get that balanced spin as you're working with the fiber. The other thing that I like about this particular style of tool is once again, you have a design that is more top whirl, but the piece down here, the indent down here, and the point will allow me to support this if need be. Or as a modern spinner, I can create and I can make this tool my own. While it was designed to be spun this way, it can also be spun as a bottom whirl with the half hitch, and I'm going to show both of those. I think it's really important to recognize and to acknowledge the original use of a tool, but being in the 21st century, I'm not doing historical reenactment right now, and I think it's also really important for spinners to be able to find ways to use the tool in the way that best supports their spinning or provides them with what they need to get the finished yarn that they want. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna set this one off to the side. Because this is considered to be a silk spinner, I have some mulberry silk top. Once again, top because it's one of the easiest types of fibers to get. And I want to talk a little bit about a book as well. And this is something a little bit new, but The Practical Spinner's Guide to Silk is an amazing accompaniment for anyone getting into and starting to spin 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 silk. There it the book talks about the different types of silk, different preparations, 
holding, spinning, and how to work with a fiber that can be a little bit challenging. Silk has its own inherent challenges, much like cotton does. So once again, I have Mulberry Silk Top, and as you can see, I have all of these different sort of pieces. I'm gonna pull off a small piece. So as a new spinner, and even as a seasoned spinner, I don't wanna be working with a lot of fiber to start out with, and that's only because this is all one color, and I don't want to have to be managing a lot of fiber in my hands. As always, I am going to tuck this under my bracelets just to get it out of the way. Traditional silk spinners, for those of you that have Betty's book, you'll know that they ha it's a on a distaff, which I am not a fan of. So I like using what I have available to me. Silk wants to be spun very fine. I am still going to start this the way that I start all of my spinning. There are so many different ways to do this for additional ways to start your spinning. You can check out the Peahens blog. She does a lovely job of talking about a lot of different ways to start spinning. There are also many, many different videos on how to start spinning. So as always, I'm going to fold that piece over I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to need the leader. The challenge with this particular type of spindle is that it doesn't spin very long. And because it's silk, I'm going to be drafting out very fine. To get that leader. I feel like I'm spinning dental floss. Now, I'm not going to put it up here. I am going to start down in the middle to start building my cop. Like so. And because I, I have this, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate how to spin with the half hitch because I have enough of a leader on there. So as always, for a half hitch, I'm just going to wrap the fiber around my thumb and pop it onto the end. and then spin. The downside with spinning it upside down without a decent cop, there we go. It's a little bit more of a challenge to get it, to get a balanced spin. All right, so there's that. And I will pop it off. Build my cup. And just one second, I'm going to reach over to the side. For my spinning bowl. and I will demonstrate it supported as well. I love spindles that have that point on the bottom. Because it provides security. And the other reason why I like using a bowl for this, silk is an incredibly strong fiber, so it, it this is so incredibly fine. I'll, I'll set that down, and I should have brought, so yeah, here it is. There it is, plied. And as you can see, I'm spinning thread, 
This is a beautiful spindle for spinning thread. And it is strong, so I will be able to build up a large cop. And because of the nature of silk, I'm, I, I'm really not too worried about it breaking. But I, I always have that fear. So anytime I can drop a spindle into a bowl, it just makes me feel better. And I'm gonna spin, I'm trying to see how thin I can spin with this. This is also a nice spindle to start to get the feel for spinning supported. And the reason why I say that is because when you spin supported, you need to develop a rhythm for spinning and drafting. And this is kind of a nice segue into supported spinning. For this particular style, I am doing what I would like to call short forward draw. This is a short forward draw. So as I am spinning, I'll set that off to the side. Now, it, it's a little wobbly right now, and that's my fault because of how I have this. Hang on, let me wind on. I'm gonna come around. There. Draft. So I'm short forward draw. What's interesting, as I spin, I can feel the weight of the spindle. And it, 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 if I were spinning wool this thin, I think it would be a little bit more of a challenge to keep it together. But I can, it, okay. it's almost one of those things as I'm spinning it, I can kind of feel my heart racing. I'm like, no, I, I, I wanna go back to the bowl because I know that it's safe. And even it's, it's, it's what you get comfortable doing, but I feel like the minute I can get a spindle back in a bowl with some level of support, my confidence changes. And I think it's important to recognize you need to find a tool and a technique that you're confident when using. Oh, that's so thin. So, just a quick recap. This is a carved one piece spindle, commonly referred to as a Victorian silk spindle, and I am spinning mulberry silk top. As you can see, in the time that we've spent, I have, I've developed quite a bit. I'm starting to build the cop quite well. And I can show you what it will look like plied. Okay, that's it. So that's what it will look like plied. It is a beautiful spindle. Okay, it doesn't want to go that way, we'll go this way. It's a beautiful, spindle for spinning very fine thread. This particular style of spindle, because it has the point on the bottom, it can be used in a support bowl. And I would like to call this a, a novelty spindle, and, and I don't mean any disrespect by that. What I mean by novelty spindle is only that 
This is not the type of spindle that you are going to commonly find or commonly see. And that's been true with a couple of the other spindles that I've showcased as well. Is this a spindle that I would recommend for new spinners? I don't know, maybe. I think that the support aspect of it, it's just as easy to get started as any other drop spindle. You're able to spin fine. It has the support feature on there. It is a unique looking tool. So I would never dissuade a new spinner from trying this particular type of spindle if they liked the look of it. Nothing else, it's definitely going to be a conversation piece and it is beautiful for spinning silk. Some of the other fibers I think might be a little bit more challenging, but it is a perfect silk spinner. So as always, thank you so much for checking out these little showcases. See down below for additional information on the pros and cons of this particular type of spindle. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. Happy spinning.